Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys yet another update on my experience with the Sony NEX5R. So as you can see, I have it next to the NEX7, which is on its left. Two really different cameras, not only because they're from different generations of the NEX lineup, of course the 5R brand new, the NEX7 from last year, but also they represent extraordinarily different price points and demographics. The NEX7, more of a manual NEX model, priced at $1,350 for the kit you're looking at there, and the 5R coming in at $750 for the kit that you're looking at there on the right hand side. Of course you can also pick up the 5R with the brand new Pancake Kit zoom lens which I do recommend because it is a relative bargain at $800 only $50 more than this kit and you get a compact power zoom uh, pancake which still retains some manual controls so really impressed by that lens I've only seen samples so far but I really like what I see and look forward to getting my hands on one eventually and since it's going to retail for $350 certainly a great value to pick up with the 5R at the $800 price point but moving away from pricing let's give you guys that update you've been waiting for I've already done an unboxing I've already given you guys some initial impressions of what Wi-Fi brings to the NEX lineup of cameras, specifically the 5R and 6, that are dropping eminently. By the way, if you do go for that pancake lens, it's not out yet, so you will be waiting till the middle of November, maybe even December for it, depending on availability. The 5R with this lens, though, is currently making its way to just about every uh, retailer, both online and brick and mortar. So let's talk about the big updates and what I've noticed so far. First and foremost, that hybrid autofocus. Many of you out there are probably wondering, is the difference that big now that we've got a combination of both phase detection as well as contrast detection in order to achieve better focusing? The answer is yes. If Sony uh, you know, had brought this feature to the table as simply a marketing gimmick, I'd be the first to tell you guys, and I can tell you right now, it definitely outperforms all previous generations uh, or really even just last year's generation because in my opinion the 5N and NEX7 were really the benchmarks where uh, the NEX camera line really started to shine and outperform much of the competition in the marketplace so I can assure you right now autofocus is superior and I can imagine they will only improve it since this camera does have Wi-Fi functionality and that's another big plus of having the Wi-Fi on board is that Sony now has the ability and should be aggressive in updating the firmware and really changing your experience not only in ways where you're going to be paying for applications but also improving things like autofocus, something we saw them do with the 5N and it made a tremendous difference when they updated the 5N's uh, firmware. So autofocus really solid. Unfortunately I haven't been able to utilize it uh, for any sports photography yet and that's where I expect to see a really big gain in performance general autofocus performance compared to the NEX7 that was just out of focus in the background but is now clear they're very very close I have to say that the 5R is pretty much on par with the NEX7. I haven't seen a tremendous difference and that's good news for 5R uh, prospective buyers because quite frankly you're getting performance similar to a $1,350 camera and when I get to some sports photo shoots that's when I'm gonna know whether or not the 5R best the NEX7 now I'm expecting this new hybrid autofocus system to do better simply because in theory it has all of the right stuff whether or not it will be able to perform is another question altogether I will be testing that with the 55 to 210 as well as the 18 to 200 the older Sony lens which if any of you have followed my NEX coverage then you know that I prefer the older big old barrel of that uh, original SEL uh, 18 to 200 than the newer lighter and uh, color appropriate LE version that came out over the summer especially if you are looking to do both still and video but back to the 5R so autofocus big improvement I'll let you guys know once I put it to the test with sports photography that's where I expect the real uh, improvement let's talk about the other thing that is a big improvement we all know that the LCD got this new range of motion really impressive the self-portrait thing a little bit redundant but certainly good to have I do wish that my NEX7 had it for the few occasions where I need to utilize that but I say few and that's because there are really very few occasions where I need it but it's certainly better to have it than not the more important thing about the ability to articulate in my opinion is for the overhead shots and video now because when this thing's on a tripod unlike the NEX7 we can actually get a nice articulated 
uh, view, something I couldn't achieve with the NEX7. Couldn't really get, uh, for example, I couldn't really use the NEX7 comfortably here for the Digital Digest for that very reason. Something like the 5R or the NEX6 could clearly work. Now, whether or not the overheating is going to be an issue, that's another story. I can tell you that this generation does suffer. I'm speaking now at least on behalf of the 5R, so I expect similar results with the 6. They both do still suffer from overheating issues, but that's only if you really push them. So it seems like Sony has improved with regard to overheating. And another way to really improve that is obviously by getting this LCD as far as possible away from the heatsink right back here in the camera, because this is where all the action, the sensor, everything Thing is. So the farther you can keep this from that, obviously the lower the temperatures are going to be. Something the previous gen, aka the NEX7 and 5N, could not achieve. So it's not a tremendous difference, but still noteworthy nonetheless. Uh, but back to the touchscreen experience, because that's what I think a lot of you are curious about above and beyond the autofocus. I can tell you right now the touchscreen is very similar to what was on the 5N. And that's not a bad thing necessarily, but my expectations were a little bit higher for the 5R because it seemed like Sony really recognized they had to rectify a checklist of items in order to make what was a fantastic camera in the 5N uh, the best available camera in this new 5R. And it seems like they cut the corner on the screen really in my opinion. I'm not being harsh I don't think when I say this simply because uh, when you do get to you know menu diving and things like that, Overall, it's generally fine. Uh, where you're going to have issues is just on things like pairing and the instances where you actually have to pull up a keyboard on this screen and input text. Uh, frankly, it is resistive. It's not capacitive. I was hoping for capacitive unless it's some hybrid screen that I'm unaware of. Uh, it certainly isn't responsive to just heat, uh, or heat at all, I should say, uh, because you can press it with anything and it will pick it up and it does a decent job. But as I was saying, when you get to a text input field, have to put in your network key, have to log into Sony's Play Memory software on the camera, those are going to be painful tasks to do on this screen. And that's something Sony is just too good at this. And I, by that, I mean the electronics business in general. They've been around too long to cut a corner like that. So that's one area where I would have liked to have seen a better uh, interface and a more intuitive UI. Not UI, that's not the right word, but just a better screen. Because frankly, the UI is fine. The menu layout system is what we all know and have come to love with the 5N. It's just a matter of having a more uh, intuitive and usable screen than what is on this camera. And because they've improved so many things from autofocus to the tilt in the screen giving you a, a far greater range of motion, you would think they wouldn't cut a corner like the screen sensitivity. And especially since this is a Wi-Fi enabled camera. So if you know a user is gonna have to get more in depth with the screen than they did in the previous generation, you would think it would be a good thing to make the screen better. So uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that in advance. Again, it's not a tremendous criticism of this camera because this is a, you know, only a $750 camera. And that may be a lot uh, for many of you out there because it is expensive, but in the scope of things, if you are focused on the image and video quality, you're gonna be nothing short of astounded of the performance that this camera yields. But I do have to tell you about the touchscreen because that is something that I feel so far is a little bit of a letdown from a camera that pretty much has blown me away in every other regard. So other important things, manual controls, that function button, as well as uh, what we had from the Tri-Nav uh, dial on the NEX7, you can see really similar, pretty much the exact same layout. So Sony, listening to customer feedback, recognizing that more manual controls were needed, and even though this was going to be a touchscreen driven experience, they still wanted to give users the ability to do less menu diving on the touchscreen. So I'm not sure if Sony figured by adding these manual controls they could cut that corner. Maybe that was the idea, but nonetheless I would like to see them rectify the touchscreen because then this camera in my mind would be pretty much just about perfect for a whole, a very broad range of users and a great backup even to some professional gear. Really like what I'm seeing, especially if you throw the electronic viewfinder on here, if you're gonna buy that uh, accessory for $350, then you have a really nice complete uh, kit. So just wanted to give you guys that update. So autofocus looking really good and overall performance is great. Love these new uh, manual buttons that are programmable. I'll take you guys through everything when I get to the full review eventually. And if you're questioning whether or not this is worth the extra money over the 5N, it really comes down to whether or not you want to pick up 
uh, that new pancake uh, kit lens, in my opinion, because that's where the value is. You know, you can't pick that up with the old 5N. It can only be purchased with the 5R or the NEX6. So if you're looking to get that pancake lens, then the better value is going to be here. Otherwise, right now, until I see the true capability of the hybrid autofocus system in a sports photography situation, I can't really tell you guys that there is a tremendous difference uh, on at least on what uh, should be a tremendous difference on paper based on the new hybrid autofocus system obviously so if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to po uh, post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later